Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So, uh, now we are looking at uh, uh, solving the entire flow field in that context we are looking at inviscid irrotational flows and uh, uh, we are look specifically isentropic flows. So, uh, then uh, in the previous class we had looked at uh, uh, when we consider irrotational flows we know that uh, uh, the velocity can be expressed as the gradient of a scalar potential uh, because it is irrotational or del cross p is 0. So, v uh, can be expressed as gradient of, of a potential and we had looked at uh, the velocity potential equation in its full form in three dimensions. It is a nonlinear uh, equation, mm, but when uh, specifically taken in along uh, two uh, dimensions then we looked at it was it uh, specifically 1 minus u square by a square um, phi x x minus 2 u v by a square phi x y plus 1 minus v square by a square phi y y equal to 0. Uh, of course, u is equal to phi x and v is equal to phi y. Uh, and we looked at uh, the behavior of these equations we found that the determinant is uh, which is b square minus 4 a c uh, was uh, turned out to be m square minus 1. Uh, therefore, when you consider subsonic flows uh, determinant is less than 0. So, uh, when m is less than 1 therefore, it behaves in an elliptic manner and uh, determinant is greater than 0 when m is greater than 1 for supersonic flows it behaves in hyperbolic manner. So, this distinction uh, should be really appreciated uh, when you look at solving subsonic flow problems and solving uh, supersonic flow problems and uh, we will come to it again and again. But now our question is, is there any approach by which see this in its full form uh, it is a nonlinear equation and it has to be solved numerically, but can we get some solutions for certain specific cases. A normal approach uh, in such cases of looking at nonlinear equations is to see if it can be linearized and uh, this particularly useful in cases where you have uh, uh, thin bodies in a mean flow. For example, an airfoil in a mean flow in a uniform flow. Uh, so, uh, this is a very important problem for aerodynamics and uh, uh, it can be an airfoil which is placed in a uniform flow. Now, this airfoil actually changes uh, uh, the flow around it by small values which is u prime, v prime, w prime. So, they are called as perturbations to the uniform flow v infinity. Uh, so, this v infinity is along x direction which is along u. So, uh, u is v, v infinity plus the perturbation velocity u prime while uh, v is v prime and w is w prime. So, now we look at uh, can we take this approach and get some useful uh, results for the case of subsonic flows and uh, uh, then uh, how is the velocity potential written. So, we define a perturbation uh, velocity potential such that dou phi small phi by dou x is u prime, dou small phi by dou y is v prime, dou small phi by dou z is w prime. Then the velocity potential in the x direction actually becomes or uh, velocity potential itself is v infinity x plus uh, this uh, perturbation potential phi. 
so you can see that uh, uh, dou phi capital phi by dou x is actually v infinity plus u prime. So, you can just differentiate it and it will be uh, you can easily see that um, because uh, dou, uh, dou small phi by dou x is u prime uh, and uh, phi prime is dou phi by dou y anyway that is the same as um, dou phi by dou y and similarly w prime. So, now you can define phi x x and phi y y and phi z z so on. Okay. So, now we are considering uh, small perturbations. So, let us go back to the uh, velocity potential uh, equation itself and um, then substitute uh, these perturbation uh, potentials into uh, the velocity potential equation. Okay. So, then if you substitute them uh, you had a square minus u square where at u square you will put v infinity plus dou phi by dou x where the small phi is a perturbation potential. Similarly, a square minus v square it will be dou phi by dou y and uh, so on. So, now uh, uh, this uh, entire equation is the perturbation velocity potential equation. You can write it in terms of uh, um, velocities to get better insight. Uh, u square in terms of u prime square, b prime square, w prime square. Uh, now, we also get a square here, we have to relate a square. So, for that we use the approach that uh, total enthalpy is constant. So, uh, h infinity plus v infinity square is equal to uh, h plus uh, uh, the perturbation velocities, but this is the way it is approached. Okay. They can be written in terms of acoustic speeds, uh, this is something we did early on in gas dynamics in uh, the early chapters. So, it is written in terms of that. Uh, here there is a v infinity square by 2 and there is a v infinity square by 2, they get cancelled with each other and you get a square in terms of a infinity square 2 u prime v infinity uh, u prime square v prime square and w prime square. So, this equation for a square is substituted in uh, the main equation uh, which is the full perturbation velocity potential equation. So, if you do that and collect uh, various terms and rearrange them and collect various terms, then uh, you get uh, this particular form which is 1 minus m infinity square dou u prime by dou x plus dou v prime by dou y plus dou w prime by dou z. Uh, is equal to uh, a sum of factors over here in terms of u prime by v infinity, u prime square and so on multiplied by dou u prime by dou x plus similarly a factor multiplying dou v prime by dou y, another factor multiplying dou w prime by dou z and a combination of different uh, factors. Now, this is a full uh, equation, full exact uh, equation for a rotational isentropic flow in terms of uh, perturbation velocity potential. But now, what we have to do is simplify this equation by considering an uh, analysis where we see how, how, which of them are really important because you have u prime, v prime, w prime and what we say is they are small perturbations. That means, they are small if you consider squares or multiples of uh, u prime by v infinity square or u prime v prime by v infinity okay so all these parameters are even smaller so if you consider such order of uh, magnitude uh, analysis for a subsonic flow and uh, supersonic flow not in between not in the range of transonic flows then you find that uh, the various terms uh, that are there on the right hand side are very small in comparison to the corresponding terms on the left hand side. So, the left hand side becomes important. So, you have these various terms dou u prime by dou x, dou v prime by dou y, dou w prime by uh, dou z right. So, these terms if you take a look at them, the order of these are small in comparison to the left hand side which is dou u prime by dou x, dou v prime by dou y 
dou w prime by dou z because they are getting multiplied by uh, various small quantities. So, um, if you consider uh, such an uh, approach then we find that uh, uh, this perturb uh, perturbation velocity potential uh, reduces down to 1 minus m infinity square dou u prime by dou x plus dou v prime by dou y plus dou w prime by dou z which is much much simpler and uh, not only is it simpler it is also linear uh, in terms of if you now put back the velocity potential m infinity is a constant for a given problem. So, now this is a linear equation. So, uh, this is a linearized uh, perturbation velocity potential equation. Okay. So, uh, this is applicable for very small perturbations. So, perturbations are small that is that corresponds to that uh, airfoils are thin and similar such uh, arguments and uh, uh, it is for subsonic and supersonic flows that is transonic flow is uh, excluded. In uh, one of the conditions you also say that uh, for Mach numbers which are less than 5 uh, which is uh, that is it is in supersonic flow but not so high speed that you can consider it as hypersonic flow then changes in V is also small. So, that is that means hypersonic flow is also excluded. So, if you consider only subsonic flow and supersonic flow then the linearized uh, velocity potential equation uh, must hold good. So, it should hold good. So, now we can see how this can be analyzed for a subsonic flow. Before going there uh, what we really are interested if you consider an airfoil uh, is how does uh, pressure change over the airfoil. So, that from such an information we will be able to gather information on the lift or aerodynamic coefficients. So, we really need to know what is the coefficient of uh, pressure which is p minus p infinity by half rho infinity v infinity square. Uh, now, if you uh, take uh, p infinity out of this it will become p infinity by p by p infinity minus 1 by half rho infinity v infinity square use the fact if you multiply and divide by gamma then you have a gamma p by rho over here. So, this is gamma p by rho. So, this actually turns out to be 2 by gamma m infinity square multiplied by p by p infinity minus 1. Okay. So, C p can be written in terms of m infinity and p by p infinity minus 1. Now, can we uh, express p by p infinity in terms of the velocity potentials or a perturbation velocity potential. Then we will get C p in terms of the linearized theory. So, for this we can use again the total enthalpy is constant okay, and express uh, t plus v square by 2 C p is t infinity plus v square by 2 C p and uh, C p is gamma r by gamma minus 1 and therefore, you can get this in terms of a infinity. So, gamma minus 1 by 2 v infinity square minus v square by a infinity square. Now, v square is uh, uh, written in terms of the velocity potentials v infinity uh, plus u prime square plus uh, v prime square plus uh, w prime square. So, if you substitute that and you look at t by t infinity it can be written uh, in this manner because there is one v infinity here uh, the v infinity square terms get cancelled off and you get 2 u prime v infinity plus u prime square plus v prime square plus w prime square. This is t by t infinity. Okay. So, what is now we know that it is a uh, isentropic flow therefore, we can express uh, p by p infinity as t by t infinity raised to gamma by gamma minus 1. You can express this in terms of this and uh, you can take v infinity square out. Uh, so, you get m infinity square here and 2 u prime by v infinity. Okay. So, now this entire term uh, the complete term uh, can be written as uh, an epsilon. Now, what we are saying is that this is small perturbation. So, v prime by u v infinity 
u prime by u v infinity all of them are uh, very small similarly their squares are also very small therefore uh, the entire term uh, that is over here this is a small term that small term is epsilon raised to gamma by gamma minus 1. So, this can be expanded and uh, we are considering epsilon square and higher terms uh, they are uh, very small they are negligible you can neglect those terms and uh, you can get it only in terms of epsilon. So, 1 minus gamma by gamma minus 1 epsilon you substitute back the term and now we know p by p infinity in terms of the perturbation potentials uh, perturbation velocities uh, and m infinity square. Now, this can be substituted in uh, C p there is a 1 here and a minus 1 here for C p. C p is 2 by gamma m infinity square p by p infinity minus 1. So, those 1s get cancelled off and 2 by gamma m infinity square uh, this term uh, gets multiplied. So, this becomes multiplication becomes 1 and all u infinity square u prime by p infinity uh, this square terms are very small much small. So, this will become equal to minus 2 u prime by v infinity. So, for a linearized coefficient of pressure can be just expressed in terms of the uh, u uh, uh, velocity perturbation potential in u. So, this is a important uh, mm. result that comes out of this analysis this enables a uh, certain way to solve uh, the equations. So, uh, this is valid for small perturbations ok any small uh, perturbations mm. and it is valid both for uh, supersonic and subsonic flow. Now, let us look at uh, subsonic flow in particular over a thin airfoil at small angle of attack. So, then uh, your velocity potentials or, or small perturbations are uh, small. Uh, it is an inviscid flow. So, the appropriate boundary condition is that the flow is uh, tangential to the shape. So, if you know the shape of the airfoil y is some f of x. And then uh, the tangent is df by dx and uh, the flow at the surface should be tangent to it that is v prime by v infinity plus u prime should be equal to tan theta. Okay. So, now it is very very small. Uh, so, we say tan theta is approximately equal to theta which is equal to d phi by dx. Also, uh, we also use the fact that u prime is much smaller than v infinity therefore, you can express Mm, uh, d f by d x is v prime by v infinity and v prime is dou phi by dou y. So, dou phi by dou y is equal to v infinity d, d f by d x. So, this is an appropriate boundary condition mm, to be put along the walls for the linearized uh, theory. Now, if you take the equation in two dimension it is 1 minus m infinity square uh, phi x x plus phi y y uh, equal to 0. Now, this term uh, 1 minus m infinity square is taken as beta square beta square and a transformation is introduced. So, the idea is uh, can we transform this equation to something that we already know we know solutions already exist. So, in uh, the transformed coordinates. So, this is you are applying a transformation. Uh, to uh, uh, eta zeta coordinates eta zeta coordinates where uh, zeta is equal to x and eta is beta y and the equation is beta square phi x x plus phi y y equal to 0. So, now what we have to do we have to convert this equation by doing uh, differentiation uh, along those. So, phi uh, now phi bar is expressed in zeta eta coordinates. So, so the same equation gets uh, converted into um, zeta eta coordinates. Okay. So, uh, when you do the conversions do the differentiation and uh, do the various conversions uh, which is uh, sort of listed over here 
and the final expression that you get is phi bar uh, zeta zeta plus phi bar eta eta equal to 0 which is a uh, Laplace equation. So, this equation is a uh, potential equation it is Laplace equation and it is valid or it governs the incompressible flow which is something we already uh, know about and we know many solutions of these incompressible flow in Laplace equations. We have done that for airfoil sources, sinks and so on. Mm. So, uh, now can we then utilize the results that we already have in incompressible flow. For that we should know that uh, what happens to the shape of the airfoil in uh, uh, the transformed coordinates. So, let us look at that. Uh, so, in uh, x y space we know the boundary condition corresponding to that is v infinity d f by d x is equal to dou phi by dou y and dou phi by dou y is equal to dou phi bar by dou eta. Okay. Now, if you consider it in zeta eta coordinate you sh the shape of the airfoil is uh, eta is equal to q zeta. So, v infinity d q by uh, d zeta is dou phi by dou eta. If you do the uh, math by differentiating you will at, uh, approach uh, get this particular solution and you compare it with the previous solution they are exactly the same or what you get is d f by d x is equal to d q by d zeta or in other words what it shows is that the shape of the airfoil does not change as you move from x y coordinate to zeta eta uh, space. So, it remains the same. So, whatever solutions we get in zeta eta coordinates which is uh, for a particular shape of the airfoil in incompressible flow that can be used as a solutions in uh, the compressible domain, but there will be uh, additional terms that will come and that term is due to beta. Okay, so, when you put the term uh, denoting uh, beta, so you get C p is 1 by beta uh, minus 2 u bar by v infinity, where u bar is the perturbation uh, velocity in zeta eta coordinate which is an incompressible flow solution and uh, that can be represented as C p 0 or C p incompressible which is already known. So, C p incompressible if it is known then the C p compressible is no uh, you can get it by dividing it by 1 minus m infinity square. So, this result is very uh, important very famous also and is used to extend um, aerodynamic relations that is known in incompressible flow to compressible flow. This is the prandtl glorit rule, it is a similarity rule and it is extensively used to uh, relate incompressible flow uh, uh, relations to uh, subsonic compressible flow for the same shape and uh, used extensively in uh, aerodynamics, but there are obviously certain uh, it is a, a linear linearized uh, problem actual flow is not linearized. So, people have looked at uh, other ways to overcome this also. Now, if you use uh, that is C L for a small uh, uh, that is for a section or uh, it is for an airfoil. Similarly, you can look at lift and uh, um, moment coefficients which are the integration of C p and here also since uh, all other parameters are constants you get you can uh, write uh, cl as cl0 by uh, square root of 1 minus m infinity square similarly cm is equal to cm0 by square root of 1 m infinity so what you see is that in compared to um, the incompressible uh, lift coefficient as mach number increases a lift coefficient also will increase because 1 minus m infinity square is there. So, uh, it will increase. So, uh, uh, what you also see is that the effect of compressibility is to increase the perturbation uh, velocity okay, as m infinity increases, but uh, this here what is happening is you are considering m infinity 
uh, that is a free stream flow. But we know that as the flow passes over an airfoil, it accelerates. So it accelerates. So uh, it accelerates over the airfoil. So you are expecting that the Mach number will increase. This effect is not considered. People try to consider it. There are some improved uh, compressibility corrections like the Lyotard's equations or carbon scene rule. So, they are also applied and um, these show uh, uh, this graph uh, shows a comparison of various uh, experiments with these different kind of uh, rules where it is seen that common scene rule is somewhat more uh, it applies closely or follows closely to the experimental values while parental laureates lie in the bottom part of it while light tones lie on the upper part of it. But they are all good approximations uh, when you want to make some quick uh, calculations of aerodynamic coefficients then uh, parental laureate rule can be easily applied and uh, it is quite useful. Okay. So, uh, the uh, highlight of uh, this small perturbation analysis that we saw is the uh, end result resulting in uh, parental laureate's rule and uh, this particular approach where we see that you take small perturbations and linearize a nonlinear equation and then try to uh, get some results out of it. Okay. So, uh, this is for subsonic flow and similarly we look at supersonic flow and in supersonic flow we find uh, so it is a, a now it is going to be a uh, hyperbolic equation we saw that earlier. So, the, it behaves more like a wave equation. So, there are consequences similar consequences to uh, the linearization also and we will see uh, what can be uh, what is the result expected out of it in the uh, next class. Okay. So, uh, thank you.